Hello everyone. So today we are going to understand caching data mechanism in Redux RTK query and how to use it to prevent multiple API calls or to share data between components in a ReactJS project. The overall agenda of today's session is given into three parts as usual. In the first part, we are going to understand the cache mechanism of Redux RTK query. In the middle of the session, we understand a practical example of caching and how it can be used to share data between components and prevent unnecessary API calls. And in the last part of our session, we will share some resources for future reference. So that is the overall agenda of the session. And without further ado, let's start off with the docs part of cache behavior. So you can find the caching related docs on Redux to get RTK query cache behavior page. Here they have mentioned how to use this mechanism to get data. And the main fundamental core concept which we need to understand is if we try to get a data from an API call from a query like this, and if the parameters are same, then the API call is not made again. Now let's try to understand this with a practical example instead of just going through the docs. So let's come back to our original project, which we covered in the last session. And those of you who are new to the video, I'm just going to cover a bit about it. So it is a small project where we are getting data from an API and showing the title of the post here and then for the create and delete post option. Now, if we go to the get post query, it is a simple query where we are querying the data from json placeholder.tp code and we are getting post data of the first post or from the API call and we are showing the title here. Now, let's take an example where we have multiple components in our project. So, in the SRC folder, we create another folder called components. And within that, we create a child component. And we write a React functional query, a React functional component. And in this child component, what we will do is we will import this child component in our parent component. So in the app.js, we'll import our child component. And add it to our render method. So once the compilation process completes, we can see that we have a child component text in our project. The next thing that I want to do is I want to create a grandchild component, which will be child of child component and grandchild of a app.js component. And we we'll import this in our child component code. So import. grandchild component from dot slash grandchild component and we'll create an instance of this grandchild component within our child component so we have a child component and within that we have a grandchild component now the thing or let's say there is a requirement where i want to share the title from my post in my grandchild component the one the first way which we can do is is by the means of sharing props so what we can do is we can get this get response data dot title and share it as a prop to the child component then get the child component and then pass it pass the data as a props to the grandchild component so this is one way of doing it so here we can add title and we can go with props.title. Then we come back to grandchild component and then get this prop here. Again, going with props and then let's just say props.title. Now, the thing is, the child component did not needed this prop component or this title prop at all it was required in grandchild component right so there was an unnecessary transfer of the title via the child component and the way in which this could be avoided in redux is by making use of store so in case of rtk query what they have done is they have allowed you to reuse the 
query in your code without making unnecessary API calls. So what I mean by that is instead of passing the title from child to grandchild, what we can do is we can get this query, which is get post response directly in our grandchild component and hit save. Then import the query from the services. So import use get post query from services slash post and then use this get post response to print out the title directly. And once we hit save, we can see that the title is printed out here. But advantage of this is there is only single API call which happens. So if I search for post and hit refresh, there will be only a single API call. Although we are creating the use get post query instance twice, or Redux RTK does smartly within this, it makes the API call to the server only once and caches the data. So the next time any of the child components asks for the same response, the data is passed uh, from the cache instead of making the API calls. And this is one of the way in which we can use the cache behavior to prevent uh, prop drilling or sending props unnecessary to child components like this and use the query response directly in our code. So that is one of the reasons why we can use the cache behavior in Redux RTK query or prevent uh, prop drilling or unnecessary API calls in our code by just using the caching mechanism in Redux RTK query. And you can learn more about this in the cache behavior section of the docs. And from that, you can understand more about it. Like there are some additional parameters as well, like keep unused data for um uh, for what interval and other stuff so this is the basic way in which we can share the data in between components using redux rtk query and prevent multiple api calls as well and i will share the resource of this cache behavior in the docs and hope you got the gist of how we can use caching mechanism to share data between the components so that's it from my end for today goodbye and have a nice day